Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about the five stock sampler for July 2021. All right, let's get let's get into the first stock. Uh, the first stock is Uber, Uber Technologies. You can see right now it's trading at uh, fifty dollars and seventy six cents, and over the past year it is up sixty three point three two percent, and I believe that's beating the market. Uh, yeah, the market is up. 38.7% over the past year. So it is beating it by a decent amount. Uh, let's see, for Uber, uh, let's take a look at their financials. You can see revenue, it has been, uh, it went up from 2018 to 2019, uh, 11.27 billion to 14.15 billion. But the thing is, it did go down from 2019 to 2020. Uh, 2020, it was at uh, 11.14 billion and now it is uh, at 10.5 billion for the trailing 12 months. For the net income, the net income it's not looking so good right now. Uh, you can see that it's going down over time. Uh, it did improve from 2019. You can see 2019 it was at minus 8.51 billion. 21, 2020 it uh, improved it to negative 6.77 billion and now for the trailing 12 months it's at negative 3.94 billion so it's still in the negative but that negative number is getting smaller so that's a good thing uh let's look at the balance sheet numbers balance sheet assets are higher than the liabilities as you can see here for 2018 2019 2020 and q1 2021 as you can see for all these here Total assets higher than liabilities, so that's good. And also, as you can see for the debt, the debt is increasing a little bit. Uh, but uh, as you can see, cash over here, they have a decent amount of cash. Ideally, I would like to see the cash higher than the debt. And right now for 2020 and Q1 2021, it is lower than debt. But with the amount of assets that they have and with positive revenue, I, I mean, that's not that big a deal. Uh, and also for cash flow, one thing that's not good is the cash flow is negative, as you can see here. 2018, negative 2 billion, roughly 2 billion, uh, negative 5 billion, negative 3 billion, negative 3.38 billion. So cash flow, it's not looking that great. So as you can see overall, the balance sheets, the income statements, the cash flow, I mean, it's not horrible. It is kind of bad, as you can see, compared to the other companies that I've analyzed in the past. So you might be asking, like, why am I investing in Uber if the balance sheet, it's it's not like looking all that great? Well, uh, Uber, it's a company with multiple futures. That's what, uh, what I learned from David Gardner, invest in something with multiple futures. And what I see in Uber is the same thing that I've seen in Netflix. Like, for example, Uber, they started out at they started out with transportation and now they're getting into food delivery. Netflix, they started out with uh, delivering DVDs by mail and then they moved on to online uh, streaming and then they moved on to making their own content. So maybe Uber will come out with something new in the future that will help their company evolve and improve. And also, it's a good idea to invest in a company whose products make the world a better place. And like stuff like the, the transportation and the food delivery, a lot of my friends use it, and it's really convenient for them, and I think that'll make the world a better place. So that's another reason why I'm getting it. And also, it is outperforming the market, even though the financials aren't that great. You can see here, S&P 500, or the spider, it's up 38%. Uber up 63%. So even with uh, the company not in the best position, it's still beating the market averages. So if it does manage to turn around and get improve their balance sheet, improve their uh, revenue, just imagine what it'll do compared to the market in the future. So that is the riskiest stock in the sample. I'm going to be balancing this out with some other stocks that are not as, ris as risky them with uh, more solid balance sheets and you'll see that in the following four stocks. So let's get on to the next one. Number two, 
Number two is Shopify. Shopify is also beating the S&P 500. Uh, you can see right now it is up 56%, S&P 500 38%. So that's a good thing. Let's look at the financials for Shopify. Shopify, you can see here, revenue, it's good. Going up over time, started out at a little over $1 billion. And now for the uh, 2020 year, it's up close to 3 billion with the trailing 12 months at about 3.45 billion. And net income, you can see that it's going up. 2018 and 2019, their net income was negative. 2020, it's positive now with the trailing 12 months going up even higher at 1.61 billion. And let's look at the balance sheet numbers for the total assets versus the liabilities. Here you can see 2018 assets higher than liabilities. 2019, same thing. 2020, look at that, 7.76 billion in assets versus just 1.36 billion in uh, liabilities. Did I say that right? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, 7.76 billion in assets. That's higher than that one point. Uh, 3, 6 billion in liability. So that's really good. And same with the Q1 for 2021, just crushing the liabilities there. And also the debt is quite low too. Look at this debt. It's increasing a little bit over time, but look at the debt compared to the cash. There is a lot more cash than debt. This is a really solid balance sheet. Look at, especially for the Q1 2021, look at the 7.87 billion in cash compared to 1.08 billion in debt. And same for 2020, 6.39 billion in cash compared to 1. Uh, not 1. Point, 0. 0.91 billion in debt. So this is really good. And also the cash flow, it went from a negative in 2018 to 0. 0.01 in 2019, 2020 it's at 0. 0.38. So this is a really solid company and this will help uh, balance out the risk that I'm taking with, um, what was it, Uber. Uh, and also for Shopify, this is a r quick recap of the three reasons why I like Shopify. I made a Shopify video a while back, a uh, really quick reminder of why I like Shopify. Uh, many people are creating successful online businesses such as Flav City and Linus Tech Tips using the Shopify service. And it also passes David Gardner's SNAP test, which I learned from his podcast. Uh, if you don't know what the SNAP test is, basically you take any company and then just pretend like uh, you snap your fingers and that company just goes poof. Kind of like what that one dude from the Avengers uh, did in, in that, uh, in that uh, I think it was number two movie or number one movie. The purple dude, the Thanos guy, I forget, but yeah, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. But like, I imagine that the company just poofs, and then after it poofs, like, will the will it have a significant impact on the world? Like, will it affect a lot of people in a negative way if that company was gone? And for my, uh, for me, in my opinion, if Shopify did just vanish, it would have a negative impact on a lot of people. So yeah. And also, last one, number three, why I like it, good financials. Uh, let's see, next one, number three, is Apple. Apple is up uh, almost 50% uh, for the past year. Compare that to the S&P 500, still beating it 0.38% uh, for the S&P 500. So it's beating it by about a little over 10%. Uh, for the financials, here you can see Apple has a pretty good balance sheet. Uh, revenue, it is going up. Uh, 2018, it was at 2.65 uh, billion. Trailing 12 months, 3.25 billion. So it is going up over time. It doesn't go up every single year, but like over the long period, it does go up. So as you can see here, from 2018 to 2019, revenue did go down. It was uh, 260 billion compared to 265 billion in 2018. But I mean, that's not that big a deal. Just as long as over the long term it goes up, that's the main thing. And also for net income, net income uh, that is, at, it was at 59 billion in 2018. 2020, it is down a little bit, 57 billion. But look at the trailing 12 months. Trailing 12 months, it is at 76 billion. So it's doing pretty good in my opinion. And it's not like Apple is gonna go bankrupt. And it's not anytime soon from what I can tell. It's like one of the largest companies in the world. So yeah.
Also, let's look at the balance sheet assets here. You can see assets for 2018, 2019, 2020, and Q2 2021 assets are more are higher than the liability, so that's good. Also, look at the debt. Debt has been uh, at around maybe 110 billion ish to 120 billion ish for the past three years. Compare that to the cash. The cash is pretty high. The uh, the cash is lower than the debt, which is something that I would not like to see. But the, they have a lot of assets and also a lot of revenue. So I think they'll be able to cover their bills, even though their cash is higher than their debt. And also they have a pretty good amount of free cash flow here. You can see their cash flow has been increasing. 2018, it was at, what, 64 billion-ish. And the tw trailing 12 months, it's at 90 billion. So they're doing pretty well. And also why I like Apple, as you saw from the previous charts, you can see it's outperforming the market averages. They have a really good branding. So if Apple comes out with a new product, I'm guessing that a lot of people will be interested in that product just because it was made by Apple. And Apple makes a lot of good products. I know a lot of people who really like their uh, Apple cell phones and also the, uh, what do you call that? I forgot their the name of the laptops. They're um, like MacBook Airs, like wh whoever uses that for like making videos and YouTube stuff. So yeah, that was Apple. Next one, number four is Netflix. Netflix, it is up 17.24%. So it is actually losing to the S&P 500, as you can see here. S&P 500 was up 38%. So it is losing by about, what, 20% for the past year. But let's look at the financials really quick. So for the financials, you can see that revenue has gone up from 2018 to 2020. 2018, it was at a little over 15 billion in revenue. 2020, it's at 25 billion. Trailing 12 months, it's going up even higher, 26 billion. Net income, it's also going up. You can see uh, 1.21 billion in 2018. 2020, it's up at up to 2.76 billion and trailing 12 months it's at 3.76 billion so that's good total assets here you can see total assets for 2018 that is higher than the liabilities 2019 same thing 2020 same thing 20 uh 21 uh for q1 same thing assets at 40 billion liabilities at 27 billion for the debt the debt has been going up over time uh, slowly as you can see, 2018 debt was at uh, 10.36 billion. 2021 for Q1, it's at 15.56 billion. And uh, let's see, let's look at the cash and cash equivalents. Cash has been going up also, but uh, let's see, let's look at let's look at the cash to the debt ratio. So cash, you can see, cash was at 3.79 back in 2018 with debt at 10.36. So cash was a, at about one third the amount of their debt, but look at 2021, Q1 2021. The amount of cash compared to their debt, the cash is the cash proportion is increasing. So maybe like the cash is about half the debt compared to the cash being about a third of the debt back in 2018. So that's a really good sign. And also look at the free cash flow. As you can see, 2018 and 2019, they had negative cash flow. They're turning it around in 2020, bringing it up to positive 1.93 billion. Trailing 12 months is at 2.46 uh, uh, billion, so it's up going up even higher. And yeah, looks like a pretty solid balance sheet to me. Reasons why I like Netflix, uh, the company is evolving, as I mentioned earlier with, uh, what was it? What was number one? The Uber, Uber, yeah. So compared to, I, as I mentioned with Uber, Netflix are going from, or they went from just doing DVDs, like sending out DVDs to doing the streaming to making their own original content. So that's always good. They're evolving. They have multiple futures. They adjust to the times. And also I like their products. That's number two. And also uh, uh, number three, this is something that you might not know if you're, if you don't study other languages, uh, Japanese in particular, if you don't know, uh, studying Japanese is one of my hobbies. And I use Net 
uh, Netflix to help me study Japanese because the subtitles for their original content, their audio matches the subtitles. I, I didn't know it would be this hard to find content with audio that matches the subtitles because uh, like before, I, I'm not sure if you really shopped for uh, things like DVDs and stuff like that, but when you when I was shopping for DVDs specifically, uh, maybe Japanese DVDs or maybe English DVDs with uh, with a Japanese audio version of it, I could not find anything with subtitles that would match the audio. And sometimes there were not no subtitles at all. For like a, so for example, for a Japanese movie, if you try and find a Japanese movie on DVD, it's not very likely that you'll find Japanese subtitles to match with it. And sometimes if you do find a like an American DVD, something recorded in English in Japan, there will be an option to have the audio switched from English to Japanese. And you can also put on Japanese subtitles. But the thing is, I don't know why they do this. The Japanese audio does not match the subtitles. It's different. I'm like, why would you do that? But when you go to Netflix for their original content, content most of the time not 100% of the time but most of their time most of the time the Japanese audio matches the subtitles and it's like so difficult to find that and that that's another reason why I ne- like Netflix their audio matches the subtitles for Japanese and I'm guessing for other languages too I haven't checked other languages but for Japanese at least it does so yeah that's why not ne- like Netflix uh, let's see, let's go to number five. Number five is Adobe. Adobe has been going up 35.71% over the past year compared to the market. It's losing to the market by about 3%. Uh, but let's look at the financials. Financials are pretty solid. Revenue is going up nine, uh, $9 billion in 2018, all the way up to $13.68 billion. For the trailing 12 months, net income is also going up 2.59 billion in 2018 to 5.57 billion for the trailing 12 months. That's also good. Assets compared to the liabilities 2018, uh, assets are higher than liabilities. Same for 2019, same for 2020, same for 2021. Debt has uh, been pretty pretty constant at around uh, four to five billion ish cash has been going up that's also good so cash was at uh, 3.23 billion in 2018 then it went up to almost 6 billion in 2020 now it's at uh, 4.96 billion for the trailing 12 months so that's pretty good and also oh cash flow cash flow it's also going up this is good cash flow was at 3.76 billion in 2018 trailing 12 months it's at 5.79 billion so increase in cash flow that's always good and uh, let's see for adobe why do i like adobe uh, many people use their premiere uh, pro service and all their photoshop service and also linus tech tips there uh, he made a video saying how Adobe's products makes the editing process simpler for him, so it's worth the uh, price, according to Linus. And also, Adobe, they went from just like a pay one time service, like it's before they, it was like you pay a set amount of money and then you get the Adobe software for like however long you want. But now, but a few years ago, they switched to software as a service, so it's like a subscription based model so people pay every month to use the Adobe product so that's also good and they also have good financials so that's why I like Adobe and also if you look at the five-year graph five-year graph Adobe is crushing the S&P 500 Adobe is up about uh, 519 percent compared to the market averages of about 103 percent so even though let's go back here you can see it is losing to the market at uh, 35% compared to the market at 38% for the past year. Over the past five years, it, oh, let me go back. Yeah, here. Over the past five years, it is crushing it. So that's another reason why I like it, even though it hasn't beaten it in this one year period. And yeah, that is Adobe. 
Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a screenshot of the my past five uh, five stock samplers for May and June. Here you can see that the May sampler it, it's beating the S and P 500 by 10.38 percent, and the June sampler is beating it by 14 percent. And this is really good. I didn't expect to get like this good res uh, result in such a short amount of time. And maybe in the future it might go down a bit, but I mean we're in this for the long run, about five years, so this doesn't really matter. But it's it's nice when it is beating it early on. So yeah, just uh just thought I'd mention that. And also these five stocks they will be added to this sampler on July first at the market close price. So that's when I'll add them. They'll be uh, right under the June picks. All right, let's go on to final notes. Final notes, if you didn't know, my goal is to outperform the spider, which is like the S&P 500, that's the market averages, just do better than average. If you wanna check out the Google Sheets in the description, feel free to click the link. The Google Sheets will have uh, this information along with some other picks that I've made, comparing my picks to the market. And also sometimes I post updates on the discussion tab. If you want to check out the discussion tab of the YouTube page, feel free to do that. Just click discussion, sort by newest first. That way you can see the newest comment at the top. All right, that's it for today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.